This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this glitch text effect in a vector format using Inkscape. And to follow along with this tutorial, I'll be using a specific font called 8-Bit, and you could download and install that yourself uh, if you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing here. But this can this effect can work with virtually any font you'd like, or any vector graphic, really, that you'd like. It doesn't have to be a font. You can do this with icons or logos or whatever else. So I'll go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to set up the document so that we're all working with a similar view. I'll go to File, Document Properties, and I want to set the display units to pixels, and I just want to turn off the visibility of the page border for now, and then we can close out of that. We're going to want to go to View, have custom selected, zoom in at one-to-one, -one, and then open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button here. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop-down, and then we'll open up the Edit Objects uh, edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create some text. So I'll grab the text tool, click on the canvas till we get our blinking cursor, and in all caps I'm just going to write Glitch. Uh, let me go back to the Select tool now. I'm going to click on this little T icon up here to grab the text editor. And here's the font we were looking for right here, 8-bit. But like I said, you can use any font you'd like. I'm just going to use this one here because I think it just looks good with the effect. Click Apply, close out of that, and I'm just going to hold Control and Shift and click and drag to scale this up like that. And I want to put some space between these letters because what we're going to do is we're going to create different copies of this in different colors. And uh, they're going to be one of them is going to be to the left, the other one's going to be to the right a little bit. So we're going to want some more spacing between these letters. So let me go back to the text editor. Let me click on the, uh, the text object to get the blinking cursor there. And up here, you're going to see this icon that says spacing between letters. And you could just click and hold that up to increase the spacing between the letters. And if this is moving too slow for your liking, what you could just do is just manually type in a number. I'm going to use a 40, hit enter. Uh, maybe a little more than that, 50. That's fine right there. It's better to have too much space than not enough space because afterwards we're going to go back and bring all the letters back closer together. So once we've done that, I'll go back to the select tool. Uh, I'm going to change this from a text object to a path by going to path object to path, and then I'm going to ungroup it with this button right here that says ungroup selected objects. And now I'm going to unify it all together by going to path union. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to click and drag to create a rectangle going over the bottom portion of this word right here like that. And I'm just going to make that red. Oops, let me select that again. I'm going to make that red. I'm going to bring the opacity of that down in half so I can see the word beneath it. And let me just grab the select tool and hold shift and click on the word. So we have them both selected. And in the align panel, we want to choose uh, center on vertical axis. And then this button right here that says align bottom edges, just like that. And we can click off of that to deselect everything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this red object and I'm just going to take this top arrow and scale that down a little bit, maybe something like that. And then I'm going to duplicate that by hitting control D. I'll hold shift, click on the word, and now I'm going to click the button that says align top edges. So we have another copy up there. I'll click off of that to deselect everything. I'll take this red uh, square or rectangle. Again, hit control D to duplicate it, and then hold control and just click and drag it down here to make another copy. Let me turn off the snapping so that doesn't get in the way. I'm going to make this one smaller in height like that. Maybe like that. I'm going to create another one, hit control D, hold control, bring this down here, and I'll make this one fatter like that. And that right there is pretty good. We're looking for something like that right there. I'm going to click off that to deselect everything. And what I'm going to do now is I want to select all of these red objects, but I don't want to select the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and alt, and I'm going to click and drag to draw a line going through those four red rectangles like that. And with them all selected, I'll go to path, union. And now I want to select everything. So I'll click and drag over everything, the rectangles and the text, and I'll go to Path Division. And what you're going to notice is that it broke everything up into tiny individual little pieces that we're going to alter a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over the bottom portion. I'm going to grab these bottom pieces right here, and I'll unify them all together by going to Path Union. And I'll do the same thing with the next row of lines the next row of pieces right above it. Select those, go to Path Union, do the same thing again, the next row, 
unify them. Same thing over here, path union. And you have to be careful where you're, where you're placing this select box because you don't want to grab an additional row or a different piece and unify it with the wrong row. There we go. Looks like we have two more to go. Select those and go to path union. And then finally this top row up here. And then we have that all set. So once we've done that, we're, we're going to have these separate rows of the text like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hold control and click and drag this row off to the left. Then I'll hold control, take this next row up and bring that to the right like that. Maybe this one I'll leave right there. I'll take this one, move this to the left a little bit, move this one to the right. And then this one can go to the left a little bit like that. Now I can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And as you can see, we've created like a little bit of a, a glitch effect between all of that. Now let me zoom out a little more. What I'm going to do now to finalize this, I'm going to click and drag over everything. And I'll go to Path Union. And for the color, I want to make this a very dark blue. So I'm going to come down here to our color selections. And I'm going to choose a dark shade of blue like that. Almost, almost where it looks black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D, and I'll make this one a light shade of blue. So I'll come down here and pick like a, uh, a sky blue, something like that. And then I'll just hold Control and click and drag this off to the left a little bit like that. And where it says lower selection to the bottom, I'll go ahead and click that to lower that down. And I want to duplicate that as well. So I'll hit Control D to duplicate that, and this one I will make pink. I'll hold Control, bring this to the right. And I'm just going to lower this one step so it goes beneath the uh, the uh, the main the main uh, text layer here. I'm actually going to move this in a little closer. I'm going to do the same thing with the blue one. We don't want them to be too far off, like that. And it's looking pretty good. I think one last step would be to click and drag over everything and start bringing these letters closer together. So with everything selected, I'm going to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And you're going to notice there's different nodes here for every single piece of this graphic. So I'm going to click and drag over just the nodes relating to the letter G. Or you know what? Since these are so close together, I'm going to have to change that a little bit. Let me go back to the select tool and click off of that. I'm going to have to bring this in a little more and I have to bring this in a little more as well. We don't want these, we don't want any part of these letters connect or touching each other just yet. Maybe I'll bring that like that. So we get rid of that white space in there. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'll click and drag over everything. And then navigate around. I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Edit paths by nodes. Now I'm going to take all of these nodes. I'm going to hold control and just click and drag these to the right to bring them closer to each other like that. So the G and the L is closer. And the same thing, I'm going to click and drag over all of these nodes now. Hold control, bring these over to the right. So that's closer. Same thing over here. Grab all of those nodes, hold control, bring that in closer. And we're just going to go through and do this with the rest of these letters. And it looks like I have one more to go. And I think we're in pretty good shape now. So I'm going to press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. I'll grab the select tool and I'm going to group everything together. And as you can see, we have completed our glitch text effect using Inkscape. Now, one final thing you could do if you'd like, you can click on it again to get the rotation handles and hold control and just shear this to the right a little bit with that top arrow if you'd like to really accentuate it a little more. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. That's how you can go about creating this glitch effect using Inkscape. So if you haven't done so already, be sure to join the Logos by Nick mailing list so you can receive email alerts whenever new tutorials are posted. Your information won't be sold to or shared with anyone else and you will never receive any kind of spam or promotional offers from me whatsoever. In fact, the only time you will get emails from me is when new tutorials like this one have been posted and you'll get to watch them on my website without any ads running on them. So I'll have a link in the uh, a link in the description to that information if you want to check that out. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.